Labyrinth. I'm not going to speak tonight at all. Because Vicky here is going to speak through me. <laughs> Answer that question. Talk about your love for me. Carry on. only knew. I have had stage fright all my life. <laughs> well, this is a big is, test. That is what I'm trying to get rid of, idiot. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> Tell me of your love for me. I'm right. Onward, Christian soldiers marching. <laughs> That's a start. Before. It's very interesting that this question came up. I hardly understood it, but the one thing that I've been wanting to know more about is bhakti yoga. And so far you've had many mentions of it and discussions since we've been here. So I feel that I may be a little inept at speaking on it at this point. <laughs> um, however, my love for you is endless. Beginless too. Beginless. It's a forever, it's timeless. And I'm learning about devotion. It's a slow process, but I'm beginning to learn to recognize it. It may be that it has always been there, but to be able to recognize it is a often a difficult thing. Yes. Cognition is not enough at all in the path of bhakti. But recognition of the cognition stabilizes the bhakti within you. And this is the formulation of all theologies. For theology takes you on the path of bhakti. But what is missing here and now is the truth of bhakti because bhakti can be totally blind. For if a combination is formed in the analysis with bhakti, then the blindness disappears and you become bhakti ananda. where everything is ananda bliss because of your bhakti. The essential point of bhakti yoga is first to find the object of bhakti. And that is where you start. You feel bhaktiful towards Christ, Krishna, Buddha, or Guru Raj for that matter. But it has to go far beyond that. So you take away the mental analysis of bhakti and become a bhakti itself where the mind does not remain. For essentially, bhakti is nothing else but a deep love that is nowhere else but within you. So what happens here? The mechanics are these. 
that you are drawing from within yourself the true essence of yourself for love and bhakti can never ever be separated for you are love you are bhakti you might start with an external point somewhere there in space but where is that space the space is forever residing in you hmm vicky loves me andrea loves me mother there loves me jagriti loves me and so do all of you love me huh? you love me not because i am me you love me because you are you so that eternal well of bhakti or love is forever within you the spring is there and sometimes a guru is needed uh, to break open the rock so the beauty of the spring just pours out and out and out and that is the essence of bhakti when you spring out from within yourself and you yourself are, ba- are bathed in bhakti in that eternal spring which is coming forth from within yourself and when you realize this the blindness disappears you do not have blind bhakti then for your feeling all the time that spring that is welling up within you and quenching your thirst in the beautitude of bhakti which is your self so bhakti starts from various point from the outer point but it ends up within the inner self and you start realizing the thirst quenching quality of your own inner spring and you well up in that well in knowing love and in knowing bhakti for they are not two things apart at all they are not apart love is bhakti and bhakti is love but give yourself a chance for the spring to formulate itself within you and there is where the guru comes to crack open that rock which is there within you just to be cracked open so the waters could flow we had a question during this week yesterday day before i don't know hmm? can the chicken ever hatch itself if you do not crack as a shell crack the shell so you cannot create an omelet without breaking the shell ha ah, what a beautiful word oh malet ha huh? that is bhakti om om let to bleed within yourself and let the essence within the egg 
flow through your life. It is very nourishing. What does it nourish? Yourself. And you, in the form of the Om, om Alet, are forever nourished by the beauty that lies within you. And that is the essence of Bhakti. There is no sense in me looking at Vicky and say, I love you, I love you, I love you. No, there's no sense in that. That is not my bhakti bhava. But let me be the egg and you the oil. So there we combine to form <laughs> the perfect Omelet. Omelet. That is the essence of bhakti yoga. And yoga means to find that unity, that unison, without any venison. Hmm? So the egg will exist within itself in forming the omelette. Ah. Only you supply the oil to grease it. <laughs> That's all I ask. So, in bhakti yoga, you need that grease. So you can glide smoothly on the grease to find yourself within yourself. For that is all what it would take you to. For where does the Om Olet go? It goes within you, in your stomach. Huh? And there lies the center, your stomach of bhakti yoga. And then it would rise up to the level of the heart, hmm? who will start making you burp. <laughs> and when the heart starts pounding, in the ecstasy of what the egg has provided. But be careful of one thing. The essence of the egg must not go downstairs. It must come upstairs. Hmm? So, that is the art of Bhakti Yoga where you find that union with your planet. And then you could really and truthfully look into her eyes. Mm, for then, by that time, you would have become wise enough to truly say, Beloved, I love you. Now this extends so much further and further away. You start with one object and find union with that one object and you will surely, believe you me, find that union with the entire universe where you work in combination with the entire universe and you become the universe. I do not want to say, Vicky, I love you. No. I want to say, Vicky, I have now become you. That is taking Bhakti 
to its truest level. Otherwise, it is just mental meandering. And in that meandering, there are so many veils and dales and hills that you have to cross. It becomes difficult. But when I become the veils and the dales and the hills, or whatever there is, I do not feel any strain, for in that moment I am gone. And where do I go to? I go into my heart, where her heart belongs. That is divine union. That is bhakti yoga. And yet everyone is striving for that union, for that yoga, to be yoked in. Hmm? So that the chariot of my life does not wander but well arranged by the chariot that is within me. I will not let go of the reins that control the horses of my senses, touching, feeling, smelling, hearing, seeing. Hmm? No. That is not where I belong. For having found the God in me, I have found the God in thee. So finding the yoga of life, I go into that field, the unified field of my own consciousness and making it merge into universal consciousness. There's a lovely song written by Mira who lived about four or five hundred years ago. Who are the symbols? Thanks to you, my beloved wishes. I said, oh, my. Oh, yes. You see, I'm getting entangled in love. until I met you, Guruji, and then from Anjani, I've reached the level of the Gnani, of knowingness. Mere bhakti bhav sabi rahega 
My feelings of love will for always be there. For in the knowledge of love, I find you to be everywhere. Mere dil ke baati tu sunore, mere dil ke baati tu sunore. Listen to the voice of my heart. Mere dil ke baati sunore, me nahi rahugi anjani. मैं बनूंगी ज्ञानी दिल में तेरे दिल में मुझे अपनाओ मैं रहूंगी सदा तेरे Pujani, and forever I will remain your devotee. Puja karogi me. I will always be involved in my worship for thee. Kabi tu na. हट जाओ कभी कभी ना हट जाओ डोंट यू एवर मूव अवे फ्रॉम मी बट लेट माय हार्ट रिसाइड इन योर यूनिवर्सल हार्ट आई एम श्योर देयर इज अ लिटिल प्लेस फॉर मी तेरे बिना मैं कैसे जीऊ तेरे बिना मैं कैसे जीऊ हाउ कैन आई लिव विद आउट यू व्हेन यू हैव गिवन मी दैट लिटिल स्पेस इन योर हार्ट फॉर जो आई माइट बी Just the little bit, I found I've merged in your universal bit. Now I'm speaking through the voice of Mira because she had not composed the song. I composed it for her. So develop the heart of a mirror. Find that divinity objectified first, and then lead yourself on from objectification into subjectification, where Krishna or Christ. Oh Buddha, oh Guru Raj does not live anywhere else out there, but he lives within me all the time, and that is the essence of Bhakti Yoga. That is the culmination. So then, you find the place of your true existence. Your existence is not out there. Your existence is within yourself, within your loving self, and through bhakti yoga, you assume all the qualities of love, and then you go out, wandering through the streets. As I have done, as a young boy, 
singing forever is the glory of God which I had found within me. Le jao, le jao, mozetu. Take me away, take me away, but not too far away. Take me away into your heart, and this is my eternal prayer. I have no words that I could express, but the love that is expressed within me is but the love that you have implanted in me. That is Bhakti Yoga. When the Beloved implants himself within you and your heart beats to the rhythm of the beating of his heart, that is Bhakti Yoga. No separation exists then, for you are in yoga, in union. And then the, the thou and me disappears, for we merge away in our very breaths, you and I, while the heart with its pulsations beats through our very being, creating the breath that I feel in your kiss divine, for your prana is none else but my prana and intermingling there no prana could be left ever outside just between you and me that is bhakti yoga that is true margins and people that have the temperament of bhakti follow the path and those that have the temperament of a jnani wisdom jnana yoga follow that path and those that by their nature choose karma yoga so let the karma flow by itself, empowered through your jnana and through your bhakti. For any karma performed without bhakti is valueless. It has no value. If the essence of your devotion is not involved in the karma you perform. So, there comes a time when all these things just merge together and there you allow the analytical mind to work. You allow your actions to work you allow the welling up of your bhakti to work in togetherness and you become a bhakti karma jnana yogi and then you come to this raj that takes you on the royal path raj yoga You see the simplicity of it, just to put it into practice. 
That's all. That's not difficult at all. I've known it. I've tried it. So I know what I'm talking about. Oh, let my life be filled uh, with the essence of your truth. Because there would be no difference between your truth and mine. For I am intoxicated by the wine of divinity. And that is why I love thee. Because in that intoxication I see and feel the divinity that is within thee. So the lover of bhakti his life becomes just poetry. Every word he utters is none else but a poem of his own realizations and actualizing those realizations makes you become a better karma yogi. That let love, let bhakti be the foundation. So that the feeling is involved, the entirety of you is involved in every thought, in every word, in every deed, in every action. There is nothing else but bhakti and bhakti and bhakti. And that surely will give you shakti. Ah, that divine grace will shy and cleanse away the dirt and the dross. Hmm? And you feel refreshed after the shower. But this one step further to go, that the shower, the lovely cool or warm water, <coughs> had always been there <coughs> for me. It has always been there. But now I have the sense to jump under the shower. to clean away the dirt and to become as pure as the water that is flowing on me. You see the implications of bhakti yoga. Many times you find people indulging themselves in ritualism, in outward ritualism. Mm -mm. Bhakti is inside. That's where it, where it is. You find people singing the arti. Hmm? Jaya Jagadish Hare Prabhu Jaya Jagadish Hare Jami Dukha Mera Tu Dura Kare Om Jaya Jag Desha Hare Jo Jave Fal Pave Jo Jave Fal Pave Tum Hai Mera Mata Pita, Tum Hai 
मेरा मात पिता यू आर माई मदर एंड फादर टू हु एल्स कैन आई गेट दैट्स वन फॉर्म ऑफ भक्ति यू एक्सटर्नलाइजिंग योर सेल्फ इन टू एन ऑब्जेक्ट and that's blind faith who is that up there or somewhere that is my mother and father i am my own mother and father jay jagadish hare prabhu jay jagadish hare jo jave phal paave jay 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 जय जगदीश हरे दस वन फॉर्म ऑफ भक्ति बट थ्रू भक्ति विद ड्रॉन अपॉन यू व्हेन यू स्टार्ट रियलाइजिंग आई एम द शक्ति ऑफ माय भक्ति and so lovely for the cake to be baked in its own oven yes you not baking the cake you only preparing the ingredients but the oven is baking the cake do you understand that that in spite of all your beautiful ingredients the nuts and the bolts uh, uh, whatever okay fine is just there as a means while the oven does its job huh? that is but so let that oven within me be put to 350 degrees how many i don't know you'll have to help me All right so that i could bake my cake and still eat it <laughs> that's the beauty of it all <laughs> you see i still eat it while the oven does the baking there lies the bhakti of externalization until i create as a internalization of creating that avatan within me with burning desire with perseverance to create that fire of love for love is none else but but I look around myself and I see so much devotion hmm? between Ram and Madhu hmm? between Jeff and Lorietta so much devotion between those two guys I don't remember their names and jammu and amit and others they are baking themselves within each other hmm? yes it's lovely to be baked within each other and uh, there are no uh, sexual inferences here at all bake yourself by offering yourself surrendering yourself for surrender and offering to this bhakti we you enjoy the entirety of your beloved that is bhakti hmm? and making him or her feel joyful too 
that is the other part of bhakti, where two hearts can combine and bake themselves in the oven of love. That is bhakti. Hmm? It produces such a lovely warmth and the cake would so well be enjoyed. Hmm? And then you can still have your cup of tea with it. To enhance that which you have baked. That is bhakti. So true bhakti needs enhancement by outer circumstances until you become totally established within yourself. So enjoy the environment and make yourself feel that that beautiful tree out there, that swaying grass is singing my song in its swaying. So come closer and closer to me, O oh wind. Divine wind, come closer and ruffle my hair, for I know your touch who will make me feel so much more comfortable. And I will know that you are here, ruffling my hair. So, I stay without any care for that Shakti is comforting me. It is there, but it just requires some recognition of it being there. And who is the recognizer? You yourself. The Guru comes and goes. He is everywhere. He plants that lovely cherry tree huh? glistening in sunlit brightness. But you still have to go and pluck them and eat them, digest them and assimilate them. And it all just lands up in the toilet later on. So you see, life is a bitch. But enjoy it while you can in total truthfulness. But if life is a bitch, okay, why not? Let it be a bitch. And bitches can give you more pleasure than anything else. They train for that job. The bitches are. <laughs> <laughs> So life is to be enjoyed and through these varied ways, these varied means, you find the reality within yourself, the truth within yourself and that is the essence of bhakti. Mm.
जय राम जय राम जय जय राम 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 जय राम जय राम जय जय Why that Ram somewhere out there? We don't even know if that Ram exists, but I do know that for Madhu, this Ram exists. <laughs> do you see? Do you see what I'm trying to get at? That's important. The practicality of life. Yeah, I don't know. Half oh, nearly, is it? Thank you, darling. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for It's so beautiful to be with you. It's just a pity I can't fall in love with Bill. Because love knows no toys. When you have that universe of love within you, then you are the greatest bhakti yogi, full of love, everything, everyone, equal, and no qualifications are ever required because you become love. You do not hanker after love anymore. That is where people have to reach through the means of bhakti yoga. to you to marry me, for I know in my heart you all are married to me already, not this little me, the outward form that you see, but marriage is close to you with that divinity. I have to be very careful. 